budget for one more show. I got the budget for one more show. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Steve McLean, co-founder of The Little Red Dog. This is for the Love of Dog podcast. So, so glad you're here with us on Instagram Live, everybody. Keep those questions coming. We're going to be answering those for you live, but we actually have a special, special guest. However, I'm a little worried because we have two listeners, my mom and Cindy, and Cindy is, yeah. the, is, is the second lesson. So we're only going to have one yeah. listener today. So we're so lucky. Cindy Updike is going to be on the show. She's on the show now. We have her uh, video link. She, the reason why she's on the show, let me tell you why. She is like the full player, right? She, uh, she's adopted. She's fostered. She's donated. She actually listens to us and she, she watches the heck out she's of us. She's so sweet. All this, all this, and she's a dog mom. She like like us. She's she has uh, everything we have to deal with, but she also has these other issues. I'll let her talk about it if she wishes. But she's an amazing, an amazing woman. She is a pack leader. She, she is, is a the humble. She is the humblest warrior I've met. She's awesome. And a baker. And a baker. Oh my God! Yes, I'm sorry, Cindy. Let me introduce Cindy. Cindy, how are you? Can you hear us? Okay. We can run on yes, all day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I got Gary here, your favorite trainer. Um, my favorite. <laughs> anyway, we've been eating these desserts. She's so sweet. She made us these desserts. I hope you can see them. Oh my gosh! Not just one, but we have choices. Yeah, we have choices. <laughs> well, I'm scared. Like, what if it's a bad? No, I've already. Eat, I've sampled baking. everything. Everything's amazing. <laughs> Everything's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you, Cindy. So, I want you to take us back. I want you to, if you can remember, kind of walk us through. How did you first find out about the little red dog, and why have you been so sweet and loyal? to us first of all you're thank you for that kind of introduction i almost started <laughs> crying <laughs> um, i um i found you guys online on um instagram it's uh a lot of you guys do great networking and um i found you online and i was specifically leaning for a bully breed and you guys are great about rescuing bully breeds and being advocates for that and so I saw a picture of Ivy's face <laughs> online and I was like, um, my husband and I were like, we've got to meet her. And so you guys set it up really quick and we went through the um, process of, you know, filling out our forms online and um, all your good questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we met her and <clears throat> that was that. And she was just, she was in a foster, which I love you guys are foster based because I feel like I tell a lot of people who want to adopt for the first time, um, like we did with Ivy, if dogs are foster based, you kind of can get a little bit of a feel of, you know, their characteristics. Right. Um, I've had puppies in the past. I wasn't going for a puppy. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can you kind of get to know from their fosters how they are in a home, how they are with other dogs, how they are with everything. So I love that. Um, I'm still friends with her foster to this day, actually. Oh, really? I didn't know so, that. So, yeah. Oh, that's so, so cool. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that's kind of how we found you guys. And then, obviously, I fostered Koa and then foster failed with Koa. <laughs> well, I, you know. Test drive succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Cindy, I think um, we can be, you know, very polarizing. And when I say we, it's probably more, more me than anyone else in the program. The one thing that I, the first time I met you and your parents, um, the first thing I want to say about your family, and it's not true for everybody, uh, no one can help but love you guys. You're so, all of you are so warm and sweet. And uh, normally, Normally, that makes me worry a little bit because sometimes when people are so nice and warming and loving... They lack the structure. They lack the structure. And one thing that I did appreciate about not just you, but your parents as well, is the fact that you not only listened, but you immediately tried to execute that day what kind of what I was showing you. And the thing that when I do this in the back of my tiny brain, I'm always a little worried. I don't want to be off-putting. I'm trying my hardest not to be a total jackass. Um, only a slightly, <laughs> a slightly jackass. But you, both you and your parents were so sweet and did it. And I, and, and I think for me, um, when I left that day, I, I was super confident that it was going to be successful. But I had no idea that you were going to be so awesome. And you, your husband is terrific. 
your whole family is like jumped on board, and I, I, I don't, I don't get to tell you thank you, you know, because I don't see you well, that often, you know. I know. I feel like this is you're so sweet. This is turning into the Cindy show. But I'm <laughs> well, that's what it is today. Is. That's what it is today. <laughs> no, but I'm here to talk about you guys and what I've learned from you and and how, you know, I, I that day um, I remember you brought Ivy. Um, to meet my parents' two dogs because that was they have two staffies and right. it was important for for all of them to meet because my exactly. dogs spend a lot of time with their dogs and um, you know it's it's um, the introduction was done the right way and I feel like so I I was born and raised in South Africa and I've had twelve dogs in my life. My parents had a pit bull before I was even born. So right. I was born into that. I was, you know, that. And I, we've had, I think, seven total bully breeds. And I just, I've always been an advocate for them. Um, and, you know, I understand that. So this is what I want to talk about is that I understand that, you know, when you have a, when you adopt a bully breed, you automatically have to be a responsible bully breed owner and you have to right. automatically be an advocate for that. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's a responsibility automatically for being an advocate because I say breed racism is real. Right. It's, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. understanding that they're always going to be stereotyped and they're always going to be stigmatized is a big thing for me. And you just have to understand that you have to automatically start from the beginning of education right. because Everybody who sees my sweet Ivy thinks, you know, oh gosh, like she's a certain type and they haven't even met her yet. Right. And when people have their kids and they see her, they like walk the other way and I want to be like, wait, <laughs> she's like the best dog. She loves kids. So right. I just feel like I love the education part. I almost get, get a rise off of people acting scared so I can then step in and yes. be like, listen, I'll make her sit, pet her. She's the sweetest dog and I've never had anybody walk away who was a little fearful at first, just of her breed, walk away and think, you know, they always think otherwise. So right. that's, you know, I've always been a big advocate for that. Um, I always say that my biggest thing is that like all breeds have aggressive dogs. And I sure. feel like he wasn't born knowing that she's a big, strong, muscular dog. Right. So, you know, I just think, of course, there's aggressive pit bulls, but there's aggressive Dobermans, Chihuahuas, Doodles, right. whatever, you know, and so... That's kind of, I just try to educate people on that. And I love that you guys are, um, you know, big on being advocates for that and saving them because I feel like there's a lot of them in, in shelters. And, you know, as you've taught me, here we go. <laughs> one of the things you guys have taught me, one of the many is that aggression is fear. Right. So it, it stems from fear. And so if you can understand that, you've already got one understanding that, you know, it's not not all dogs are just straight up aggressive. It, it's got to be, they've got to be fearful of something. I mean, of course there's that tiny percent, but, sure, sure. um, you know, it just, it doesn't mean that they're automatically aggressive. Well, I think, so I and, just, and I think too, uh, Cindy, don't you, don't you find, I find this helpful. And I think you said, you said this, I'm just kind of reiterating it. Don't you find it helpful? And it brings you more confidence when you see a dog that before you would perceive as aggressive and scary, but now you know that that dog that, that you're approaching is just scared to death. So that actually gives you more confidence, right, to kind of deal with it and say, okay, uh, if, you just, if you just listen to me, I will, I will take you out of this state, right? I find it very comforting. Exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and it's made me learn to not just approach, also just randomly approach people's dogs without asking them. And I've learned right. that, guys, that from you guys too is that – you know, just because of the way she looks, I know that there's not, you know, she's not aggressive, but I appreciate people asking me that way. It kind of leads me into being able to educate them on how, no, she's not. And you're welcome to pet her and stuff like that. I mean, when I first was fostering Koa, um, who was known as Zodiac, um, you know, he was scared. Like I, you guys, you said that he was found at a dumping ground or something. And he had, I don't, he had never had a home. I can tell you, he didn't know how to take a treat. He didn't know right. how to sit. And he came straight from boarding to my house. And, you know, what, with that, what I learned from you guys was I remember he would lunge at people and right. bark and growl. Right. And I called you, Steve, and right. I said, I'm not sure, you know, what to do. And it was like high energy, like when people would go, hey, you know, that sure. loud, it made him scared. His hair would stand up. And right. before I started getting interested in, in the dog behavior part, I never understood this, that you, you told me, 
the reason he's doing that, and if I'm wrong, tell me because my memory, I've got a chemo brain all the time. <laughs> but his, what you told me was that he doesn't trust you. He's not confident in your leadership right. and you need to be, you need to teach him and show him that I've got this. Like I'm, I'm the leader. I will not put you in danger right. and like kind of, you know, let him feed off of that confidence. And I swear to you, he is a different dog. I can't even tell you the last time. And I worked on it. You said, look at his body language right. when somebody's approaching you, you know, is the hair standing up or the ears? Is he kind of, and, and you got to get that correction right before it happens. Right. So that's what you, you, you taught me. And I do that. And I, I worked on it because I don't want to walk around with a dog barking at people. Sure. It's not cute. It's not, you know, <laughs> no, it's, it's not, not cute that it's not like, oh, he's trying to be protective. Well, it's right. not cute. Right. So, and it means that he's scared and that he doesn't trust me and he, um, he doesn't believe I'm his leader. And that's why it's not because it's trying to protect me. And that's me. a hard part for <laughs> a lot of people to understand is that it's going to be the structure right. that takes a nervous dog through. You know, when you right. deal with a nervous person, if you dealt with a nervous person the way that you have to ne deal with a nervous dog, then you'd re probably come off like an ass. Well, yeah. And I was just, <laughs> that's the thing that I'm, I, I'm, hopefully I'm reiterating it correctly is most people, when I tell them, you know, you got to work on your leadership. You have to show this dog that you know what you're doing. If I tell 10 people that, three people are actually going to listen and two people will execute it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And, um, and I think I, my personality, I can only do it one way. I have to be direct. And I know I can be, I, sometimes it's a lot to hear things from me, my approach. But I think, I think I've learned that uh, you're not going to listen to me anyway. So might as well be direct, yep. Um, because then you know I'm sincere, yep. And then if I don't like what I see, I'm going to tell you, hey. And I always preface it by saying, look, I don't know you, so don't take anything I say personally. But I and I don't mean to keep blowing smoke, uh, Cindy. But you, but you don't understand. You are in the, <laughs> the minority, and the thing that I do love about dog behavior is it it forces all dog owners to work on what we're shitty at because the dog knows what we're shitty at and the dog is going to pick at that. <laughs> you know, with me, it's my temper, you know, so, so all my dogs know, Hey, if we can just get this guy pissed off, we can, we can have our way. <laughs> we'll break him. Yeah. We can break this idiot. <laughs> and I think, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just saying, I'm saying, look, this is what you need to do. If you want balance in your life, if you don't want balanced life, you're a grown ass human being. You can do whatever the hell you want, yeah. but I'm telling you, if you want to be balanced, you want to be happy, then this is what you need to do. And I think, Cindy, I don't want to die. It's up, to, you know, I, I want you to be as honest on the show as you want. I think the one reason why that you, that you took these little, and I don't want to say criticisms because it's not a criticism, but when you've been through some shit that you've been through, <laughs> you're going to be open to, to learning. Yeah. Because, because what you've been through, Real deal. Yeah, it's a real deal. And it's like nothing worse, right? I mean, you, it's just, it's, it's a little thing. And you go, oh, yeah, I can do that. But most people, <laughs> most people don't do that. You know, they listen to what I want them to work on. They're like, they either, they either screw you, you're wrong about me, or, or they're just lazy. Yep. You know? But well, I, I can tell you that I like, I like people that are direct because I'm direct. And so it worked for me. Um, you know, and I've had Gary at the house um, to help me with leash, with walking the dogs on a leash. Um, you know, Ivy's stubborn. She's a pit bull. Yeah, um, she, very. Well, she's an Amstaff, same thing. But right. I don't, we don't need to get into that. But, yeah, right. she, you know, <laughs> um, the umbrella. But, yeah, she, you know, it, it's what I, a big thing that I learned from you. And I, I like when people are direct. Um, yes, with what I've been through, um, I that you're right, that is my personality. And if I'm not feeling well and I want to handle two big, you know, 60 pound dogs, 65 on a leash, I wanted to listen and I feel like it's up to up to people. Um, I think the biggest, mis the biggest thing also that I learned from you guys um, is that dogs are not humans. That's they're right. not humans. They're not, they're right. not my babies. They're, they're right. my fur babies. They're spoiled. <laughs> sure, we all know that, okay? Sure, sure, um, sure. But, but at the end of the day, they don't. They don't act like me. They don't work like me. They're not socialized like me. They're right. they're in a pack, and you have to. That's they're not humans. They need to be treated like animals, and your life will be a little bit easier. And so it took right. me honestly. I'm not blowing smoke like you said, but listening to your podcast, talking to you, talking to Gary, like that is. I think that's the number one thing that 
the first step is to learn that they are animals, they're yes. not humans, and right. they've got to be, you know, treated a certain way. And so that's kind of where I had to start is what you guys had taught me, which sounds so simple, but like for years, I just didn't get it. Well, and, I just didn't get well, it. Well, and, uh, you know, even even myself, you know, I'm probably true with you too, Gary. We do say this all the time, but even I make the mistake with Tank. You know, I just get so enthralled with them that I make the same mistake. The difference is all of us, including you, Cindy, we realize we're making the mistake and we're willing to pay the price yeah. in that moment to get the dog back, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a mistake that you wouldn't necessarily make in step one, but right. we know where our dogs are at. We right. know how far we can push it. Right. We know, you know, if I can get walk up and give a dog, a, you know, some affection for free, I know where I can get away with it and I know where the dog's going to start taking advantage of it. Right, right. Well, Cindy, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, like, you know, like, like you had said, loving your dog into a bad habit was another big thing that I learned from you guys because, and I, you know, I taught my parents that because they've got the two, um, the, the, the mini pits, as you call them, the pocket, yeah, like English staffies. And right. they, right. Right. you know, they have Bella. And every time um, we would, you know, they would come home, she would just go absolutely nuts. <laughs> she would almost scream at them. Right. And they would come in, and I got permission from my mom for telling the story. <laughs> uh, they would come. <laughs> they, they would, but you know, I, this is after I learned from you guys what was going on. Like in that situation, I never thought about it. I would walk in too, and she would be screaming, and I'd give her a treat. Okay. And I had to go. Wait a minute. This is she's doing this because she assumes <laughs> she's getting rewarded for it. Right. So I had to show my parents because it was loud and obnoxious. And, right. you know, and it's like and now from you guys, I've taught my parents like what, you know, what to look for and to try not to love the dog or, you know, treat the dog into a bad behavior. Right. Right. Well, that's awesome because we, my, my, I try to get my motto is, you know, learn it. And then, and then teach it to someone else. So that's what you did. That's awesome. Because yeah. I remember thinking when I met, first met you <laughs> that your parents were so damn sweet. And when I met their dogs, their dogs had full reign of the entire house. And it was so cute. And I can't explain why it works. It just works. You know, yeah, but it I just mean, works. It's, it's, at least they acknowledge it now. Yeah, yeah. They see, but, you know, they see it now. So and like sweet. you said, I'm not perfect either. And right. like... You know, right. obviously, uh, every it's always a work in progress, like it Gary is. always says. I, it's always a work in progress. But, I mean, if you can f at least acknowledge what you're doing wrong and be like, okay, I shouldn't have, like, exactly. maybe let, you know, let them do this but not let them do that because it's contradicting or something like that and just... And, and that, kind of even though it's never caught on, that's why you're the definition of humble warrior. I want this to catch on. Um, and if, and if we're, here's what we're going to do. This shirt, humble warrior, it's going to be your photo on the back. And, and it's just that you're the definition of it because you've, you've learned it and you, and you understand that you're never going to get to be the perfect leader. It's, it's, it's more than enough that you know where the bar is. And that's all I ask. Because today's uh, walk was a shit show for me in the morning. We messed up a lot, but that's okay. We have another one coming up, and that one's going to be better. Um, and that's what being a humble warrior is, Cindy. And, and you know what? Thank you so much. Please continue to be our number one fan. I think you're even better than <laughs> <Always>. my mom. <laughs> Always. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you, guys. We'll have you back anytime. Great desserts. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, stay tuned, anytime. everybody. We'll be right back. This is another edition of For the Love of Dog. Hey, everybody. This is Steve at the Little Red Dog. You know, in our program, we don't just talk the talk. We also walk the walk. Now, what does that mean? Well, we're going to have a special event, a special fundraiser called the Red Dog Dash. And we're going to explain to you and help you with your pup. Now, this is a seven-day challenge. And the way that you can sign up is you can simply go to our website, thelittlereddog.org. There's all sorts of places to click and get involved. Watch us on Facebook. Get on Instagram. Easy, easy ways to sign up. But just to give you a quick outline, all this is going to be is going to help you become a humble warrior or a great alpha leader. Now, Gary, I know you're going to do this, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because even if you're a pro like Gary, you can learn something. So please, please, please tune in March 13th to the 20th. There's going to there's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of ways you can participate. 
Just go to the littlereddog.org and you'll see a huge banner of how to sign up and get involved. Hope to see you out there. It's a virtual event, but you actually get to go outside with your dog and you report to us how you're doing. Anyway, check us out. We love you. Can't do this without you. Take care, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. This is another edition for the love of dog. I'm here with Gary Newcomb. Gary, Gary, Gary. Again, never contrary. Never. 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 I Rarely. I let it happen. Rarely. Well, if you are, you, you get out of the, it pretty quick. You should see me on the freeway. <laughs> I'm quite contrary. Well, that, I was just going to say, every time I ask how you're doing, you're always almost getting fisticuffs with someone on the road. What's up with you in the road rage, man? I don't know. It's just I... I'm a very courteous driver. You know, I'm always that guy who will stop and let people out. If you yeah. throw your signal on, I'll, I'll hold a whole line of so cars behind me. So what's your pet me. peeve? What's your pet peeve? People who are not courteous. If you, uh, I gotcha. If you're not courteous and you don't practice courteousness to other people, then I feel that I need to teach you a lesson. All right. Well, I'm going to be I'm gonna be devil's advocate based on what you just said because true manners, you're supposed to let that shit go. Oh, yeah. Right. And in positive I'm just like you, by the way. That's positive reinforcement, isn't it? <laughs> you throw them a tree. <laughs> yeah. You ignore all the bads. Right. Right. Uh, no, I, I'm the same way. In fact, I'm, I mean, I'm worse. And I have a hard time with manners, for what? sure. I hate it when people aren't mannerly. But my mom's always telling because my mom's the, the queen of manners. Oh, yeah. And she's always telling me, yeah, you just have to be patient. Don't lose your temper can't do that mom yeah can't do it i've gotten a lot better though have you, you know yeah no stage when I, right yeah when i age. when i was young i was like totally uh, let's pull over and fist do it. yeah but i haven't done that in a long time you're like my dad <laughs> my dad would do that all the time even if i was in the car <laughs> in fact he i remember <laughs> wow. let's see he was he was my age he was 58 the last time he did that got his car and kicked the shit out of a a guy that was about 32. Wow. Yeah. What a G. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's quite the hothead. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously I get it naturally. Yes. Anyway. It's the alpha male. Yeah, alpha male. And, and you know, perfect uh, segue here, what I wanted to talk about. Because, um, you know, we're all about, the uh, you know, dog behavior here at the Little Red Dog. And I think one of our major jobs is trying to figure out and get down to the nitty-gritty what the application or the applicant is good at what they're bad at right and I we all hate it when someone calls a dog aggressive yes and so what I kind of want this show to be about today is our perception of what dogs how we perceive dogs personality and and then what's really going on yeah we could spend hours and hours on this yeah and and we could talk about not just about um how we see something as aggressive we could talk about other things like a dog that's super uh affectionate we perceive it as affection but really what that is is the dog's just looking for a life preserver and wants something to cling to right to get out of some security blanket yeah exactly and so having to explain that to someone is a little bit more complicated um but by far, and I think you would agree, that when we're working with dogs <clears throat> and there's a problem, normally it's because the dog is scared shitless. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. 99.9% yeah. of the time. And uh, when a dog, just like human beings, when we're fearful, you know, um, I know you know the answer, but, but, you know, when human beings or any animal is fearful, what are their options? Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Yeah. And dogs are no different. And I don't, I think for whatever reason... People kind of forget that. Yeah. And so when they see the fight response, they just naturally think this is an aggressive dog that's going to kill me. Yeah. They've taken out the fact that they've got the dog cornered in their house. They've got the dog on right. a leash. They've got. They've taken away the dog's ability to flight. And right. now you're responding with fight? Yeah. Yeah, you've taken everything else away. Yeah. So I want you to kind of do a, a I think deep dive onto that. There's a per, there, people do the same thing, like they you did. said. They you did. know, it, it's like that movie Life with Eddie Murphy, where uh, him the, and Martin Lawrence go to jail. They get accused of a crime they didn't okay, do, and okay, they okay, both okay. go to jail. And I remember the, the big guy's like, "I'm going to take your cornbread," and right, he's, right. he makes that. That's the same thing, though. You get puffy it, when you feel like someone's infringing on you, right? To try to back people off, right? And you, you know, posture. didn't work out so, so well for him. He got drug out and beat up. Right, right, right. right. And, and I always tell people, 
when I'm working, with, especially when I'm working with a couple, and I'll always look at the the female and and ask her, "What do men do when men are scared?" Most men, what do we do? You know, especially yeah. you, especially the little guys like you. And yeah, I, we have to pause. Yeah, them. absolutely. Because <laughs> I, you know, I'll, I I have to I have to quickly use words or energy that to try to intimidate because you're not going to be intimidated by my size yeah right absolutely yeah so um and i think you and i are both really good at choosing words that we know are probably going to piss the other person off yeah but but i want everyone to understand that it still comes from fear absolutely right because right? it's if a I, defensive mechanism yeah because if i'm more confident here in my soul i would just like whatever dude yeah and walk away yeah right uh, still can't do it. Even at 58, I still get frustrated. But that's my problem. But what we're here to talk about today is I want everyone to understand that when you when you actually see a dog posture, foaming at the mouth, barking, yes, it is a warning and it, you should listen. But at the same time, I don't want you to be scared to death and think this is a horrible dog because that's yep. not what's going on. Go a step back and look at the intent. Yes, so, you know, we had Cindy on before and Ivy was a perfect example. You know, when you met Ivy, in, when she met Ivy in the beginning, Ivy had been attacked by two Foster's dogs. She had dog reactivity issues. Right. So it was structure that broke those. It wasn't, you know, Cindy babying the dog and, you know, right. you're going to bring it back to comfort that way. The dog got confidence because Cindy learned dog behavior. Right. And, and I want people to understand that had Cindy or you or me used our basic human instincts, we would have done what you just said. We would have loved on the dog. Nurture, yeah. Nurture, because that is was something, even the biggest jerk in the world, when they see a dog with fur and all this, they, they want to hug, they want the love, right? It has to be taught that that is not what you're supposed to do. That's not how a dog handles it's a dog. It's not how a dog, and so, and I think that's the most difficult thing for a lot of human beings to grasp even people that have been around dogs their entire life, a lot of times, like Cindy was mentioning, the perception is this this furry four legged thing thinks just like human beings. And that's what you know. People tend to try to force everything into that loophole. Sure, you it's know, our as experience. humans, it's our we experience. see things from a human perspective. Right. So it's our tendency is to try to make everything human, and you know, its thoughts based on what a human would think and all of that. Right. So that's where a lot of people fail in the initial evaluation of what a dog is thinking because right. they're coming at it from a human perspective. Right. Right. And then I th- then when when I tend to lose my te- temper with applicants is when they say, "Well, I've had dogs my whole life, never had a problem." <laughs> so my next question is, well, let's say you're my age, you're 58, and you said uh, every dog you've ever had in your lifetime. At most on average, I'd say that's four dogs. Yeah, you've had four or five four dogs. Four or five dogs. Yeah. And mathematically speaking, you you probably got an Omega dog, mathematically speaking. Yeah. And that dog's going to go with the program pretty much anyway. So you're asking me to do everything wrong. You're probably going to be okay. Yeah. What we're trying to teach you, in, in, in my tiny brain, the best way I can say it is, pretend we're, you're about to get the worst dog, not not aggressive, you know, but just stubborn. And fearful, right? Yep. That's a bad combination. Yeah. Right? That's what we're trying to tell you is you can't win well, you cannot win every dog's respect with that love approach. No. Right. No, you can't. But you can with the other no. approach. I mean, to me it's like the softened perspective that I've taken on harnesses. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a good dog, yeah, go to your harness. dog yeah, your dog is bulletproof. Use. Yeah. yeah. Use what you gotta use. If I you use, can get the I redirect, agree. you know, do that. I don't care. So To me, you know, if you are able to control your dog in any environment, really, it doesn't matter what your dog is going through. Your dog will become more confident. Right. So it's really about controlling your dog's emotions. And because, you know, as humans, you don't try to control other people's emotions. That's inappropriate. Right. But for dogs to tell them that this emotion is inappropriate, they respond to that. Sure. They do, and I think, and that, and I think this is why I'm always saying, if you get, if you will please follow me down this wormhole and listen to what we're saying about dog behavior, we're not. If you if you're really listening, you're gonna understand. You're gonna have an aha moment and go, wait, this isn't just dog behavior. I should be controlling my emotions. I should be controlling my instincts a little better. 
you know, it's definitely a re-perspective of, you know, yes. how you, how we see the world from our, yes. our normal day-to-day stress lives. Because I don't, yes, and I don't think people understand that 90% of what everything is telling us, we, 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 we react to it in an intuitive manner, an instinct manner. And in this environment, I don't know what percentage, I'm going to say 90% of, of what your brain is telling you is wrong. Yeah. Because you're basing it on instincts that we had to survive. Yep. And that's not how we survive in today's. So, no. Nope. Right. And it's hard for me. It is. Even. I, you know, I it have a is. Hard we time. live it every day. And it is. You know, when you put yourself in, you know, the normal dog owner's shoes, like you say, we make mistakes. You know, we don't do it perfectly. And, you know, outside of the dog world, we also, we make mistakes. No. no. So it's not about, you know, necessarily saying that uh, teaching your dog that I'm always right. It's about teaching your dog, this is how I expect you to act, and I may make mistakes, and we'll get over it. Right, right, right. Well, and I've, I've been really, I think, what is Bruce Lee's famous comment, if, if you're always um, uh, reacting with uh, emotion, you're going to be super unhappy. And, and I remember either reading that or someone telling me that in my late 20s. And I, and I literally th- thought in that moment, what the, f- what the fuck? <laughs> I, you know, I, I've always, and, and maybe another reason why I'm an idiot and a jerk, I've always kind of embraced my emotion in a way. Like I've, I've always been, pr- like I, I have no problem telling people I laugh and cry pretty much every day. Yep. I really do. But I'm learning that, well, let me back up even further. I never, it, it, just speaking for myself, I never thought when I cry or I see a man cry, I never thought of that as weakness. I never, just never did, never, I never thought of it, you know. But what I'm learning though at this late age is if I do try to not get emotion into the situation, I am happier. Yeah. And that's, but I'm really bad I at it. I think it takes the swings out of the roller coaster. Yes. You know, you know you, yes. you're going to have emotions like yes. this, but yeah. if you unchecked, even for us and yeah. the dog's the same way, yes. unchecked, those emotions really become like this, where they are unable to control them. So you want to keep it, you know, yeah. somewhere around a baseline with a low wave. And, and sometimes, um, you and I, you and I both, especially you, have a very complicated life. I mean, you're you're working so hard, you Gary. I mean, you're trying to get, you're trying to be an AMT. You're working your ass off for us. You're a dad. You're a husband. In COVID, you're also a, a teacher. <laughs> you know, you're, you know, it's, it's, you're doing a lot. And my and my point is, sometimes speaking for myself, the best thing I can say during that day is, I was a decent leader with my dogs. Yeah. Sometimes that's all I can say. Yep. I was a shit show for everything else, but at least my dogs listened to me and it went okay. And yeah. I actually take pride in that now. Yeah, absolutely. But I didn't before. No, they offer you a stability in life yes. in different ways that you don't actually every day think about that they do. And if and I again, my son and I talk about this a lot. And I think that that people like yourself that really try hard with dogs, it makes you become self aware whether you want to or not. And I in in what Cindy brought uh, about earlier in the show and talked about is so important because the, again the dog is going to bring out your your shitty quality. Yep. And that's what you have to work on. Yes. And you need to be self aware about that. Yes. The self evaluation is an important part in so many aspects of your life. If you yes. want to dial in anything in your life, that yes. self evaluation is really important, and that continues on to being a good dog owner. Yeah, and, and that's why when I tell people, if you'll just do this with me, you're gonna it's going to occur to you, you're going to be better at work, you're going to be a better parent, you're going to be a better tennis player, whatever. And people look at you in the beginning like, whatever. But again, it, it, if, if you want to improve with your dog, and I think that's what we're talking about right now, I'm, I'm having an aha moment. Maybe step one is your ass better be self-aware. Yeah. Maybe that's just the first. That's yeah. <laughs> maybe that's on the top. Yeah. I've never We've thought about it. We found a before. new first block. Well, I'm serious. I mean, I because I think that um, I I think I've kind of pride, prided myself on being self aware. Like I know I have a horrible temper. I know I, I come across as a jackass, and I know I'm too kinetic, and I'm okay with that. But I need to work on my temper, as as you must too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take mine. I'll take mine. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I know it's a it's a subtle thing, but I, but I, in my mind, this is, and I know you agree with this. This is the number one place where people fail with dog ownership. 
Yes. Because they, they finally, they think they've been successful with treating the dog like a human. Then they get that stubborn dog and they, they love, 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 love. The dog gets worse, 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 worse. And they blame the dog. Yeah. And the dog goes to the shelter. No, I mean, it's like anything. If you don't question yourself as to your role in anything, right. then you're not really looking at the, you're just pointing a finger. Yeah. You have to say, you know, why is my dog doing this? Why is, you know, what role do I play in that? It, w- was there a way for me to shut this down before it ever went that far? Sure. You know, and some of those are, you know, the next level out, the tertiary level where you have to say, okay, was it because I was on my phone or because I let my dog walk in front? Or, right. you know, you have to call yourself into question sometimes to make improvements around you. And it's not always comfortable, no. but it's it's usually for the best. And most people don't want to improve themselves, right? No. It's no. too fucking hard. Yeah, no. You want to pull status quo and just get through with the <laughs> lowest, you know, Especially amount of weight. Especially guys. I'm, I'm guilty oh, yeah. of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm totally guilty of that. In Absol- fact, it happened. Well, it, it's funny that you say that because there was it's typical. I had a meet and greet yesterday. For our listeners, a meet and greet just means there's an applicant that, that went through the interview. We've, we've, uh, we've okayed them. Uh, and now they're going to meet a dog. And and it's so funny what you just said is true because a lot of times when um, a family wants a second or a third dog, it's almost always the, the female. Mm-hmm. The, the, because females, I talk about this all the time, they're more intelligent than males. They want to use their brain. They like that challenge. We just said it. Yep. Guys default to, I just want quiet. Path I want of least balance. resistance. Path of re- least resistance. To me, it's not lazy. There's a difference between being lazy and a path of least resistance. Yes. There's a total difference, Yes, right? absolutely. And I maybe that's really- just male justification, <laughs> yes. but I completely agree with you. I get so mad when PJ says I'm lazy. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm not lazy. Yeah. But a lot of times when she calls me lazy in that moment, I don't think I'm being lazy. I think I'm trying to find the most efficient way to solve this thing. Right. Yeah. But again, I, I diverge, or yeah, I, <laughs> I, I went the wrong way. Anyway, um, again, this woman wants a third dog. I can tell by the look on the husband's face, he doesn't want an extra dog. <sighs> yeah, he's just there because he loves his wife. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I, and this is what I'm talking about um, with relationships and dogs and all this stuff is all has to be balanced. And if, if, both alphas, aka the 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 humans, aren't on board. It's not going to go well. No, nope. right? Because the energy's not right. Yeah, right. And again, people don't think about that. Yeah, there's no. a lot going on. There is, and it's your job as the one who you know gets to do the interviewing to figure out what's going on. Well, I mean, we say it all the time. If we could just win the lottery or get a, a benefactor, we could be a lot more lenient, right? We just can't afford to be. Yeah, you know, we just uh, can't. You I, know. We got a return rate down so low that, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, we continue doing it this way and we won't get dogs back. Yeah, I, and I think we're, we've done a pretty decent job uh, in 2020 and the start of 2021. Our numbers are good as far as getting dogs back. But so I think, I, I, you know, I, I like to think that we're getting the information out there and it's helping. Yeah. But sometimes it's just like putting a band aid on a, you know, a compound fracture. Yeah. Sometimes, but anyway. Well, Gary, thanks again for showing up. For sure. I thanks know, for having me. Oh, of course. You're always Thanks welcome. for not eating my desserts. Well, you, I, Cindy's got a whole bucket for you. So You're make going sure, home with me. Yeah. Make sure you get those. Well, everybody, please, please, please subscribe for the love of dog. Thanks for tuning in. Um, please also check out our website, thelittlereddog.org. You can foster, adopt, donate. We need you. We need you. Please stay tuned. We are on a mission from Dog. Take care, everybody. Done.